All praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called next level. Next level, spiritual growth. Next level, spiritual growth. That's tonight's topic. Okay. Pay close attention. Take notes. Take notes. All right. Um, let's open up with the book of John. John chapter 8, verse 32. Let's start there. John the 8th chapter and the 32nd verse. Let's start there. John 8, verse 32. Read that. John chapter 8, verse 32. Go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth, as we all know, get that in Psalms 119, verse 142. Because we know it, but many of our people that are watching online, that are listening to our classes, they might not know what the truth is. Let's get it. Let's see what the truth is according to the Mosai. Psalms 119, verse 142. Let's get there. Come on. Psalms chapter 119, verse 142. Go ahead. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. You see that? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. So God's righteousness is everlasting, and thy, his laws is the truth. You understand? So God's righteousness is not finite. It's infinite. It's unmeasurable. It's outside of time. It goes in forever. Okay? Watch this. Jump up to verse 138. Watch this thing right here. Read it. Psalm chapter 119, verse 138. Mm -hmm. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. You see that? Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. This is what King David is saying right here. Heavy stuff, man. The Lord's testimonies, they are what that he has commanded is that they are righteous and very faithful. Okay, watch this. Give me that in Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Watch this. Isaiah 8 verse 20. Read that. Isaiah chapter 8 verse 20. Go ahead. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. You see that? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Listen, the laws and the testimonies, that's what we're supposed to speak. Not our personal testimonies, but the testimonies of the Lord. And now watch this. Give me Psalms 132. Psalms 132. Watch this. Psalms chapter 132. Read verse, read verse 12. Okay. Psalms 132 verse 12. Let's get, let's understand the testimonies. Watch this. To the law and the test and to the testimonies. Read. Psalms chapter 132 verse 12. If thy Go children ahead. will keep my covenant and my testimony that I shall teach them. Their mm. children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. You see what he's saying? is as if thy children will keep my covenant, meaning God's covenant, and my testimony, God's testimony, not our personal testimony, God's testimony. They shall what now? If thy children will keep my covenant and my testimony, that I shall teach them. Read. Their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. You see what he's saying? He says, their children shall also sit upon thy throne forevermore. We're going to rule forever. Go ahead. For the Lord had chosen Zion. Mm. He had desired it for his habitation. You see that thing? The Lord desires Zion. You understand? He desires us. He, had desire, he desired us for his habitation forever. So go back to Psalms 119, verse 138. One more again. Psalm chapter 119, verse 138. Mm -hmm. Thy testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. You see that thing? God's testimonies that he commanded us, they are righteous and very faithful. Come on. My zeal has consumed me. Because my enemies have forgotten thy words. Because the enemies of God have forgotten God's words. They think God's word will not come to pass. Because why? They've been ruling for us. They, they've been ruling over us forever. So they think that the Lord, the God's words, they've forgotten the word of God. They've forgotten the prophecies that are written in this book. Go ahead. 
Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. You see that? The word of God is very pure. It is therefore thy servant loveth it. We're supposed to love the word of God that is very pure. There's nothing purer than the word of God. Come on. I am small and despised. Yet do not I forget thy precepts. You see that thing? Right now we're small and we despise. We're hated of all nations on the planet Earth. He says, yet do I not forget thy precepts. We, whatever happens, brothers and sisters, never forget God's precepts. Whatever's going on, we must always return back to this book. No matter how, how ashamed you are, no matter how, how bad you think is, the things are, always remember God's precepts and return back unto him, and the Lord will have mercy upon you. Understand that. Never allow the Satan to keep you outside of this book. Never allow whatever thing that you went through to keep you outside of God's laws. Understand that thing. Go ahead. Thy righteousness Come is on. an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. God's laws is the truth. That's what we need to understand. And they go on forever. So go back to where he was at now. John 8 verse 32 again. John chapter 8 verse 32. Come on. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We shall know the laws of God that is everlasting, and the laws of God that's everlasting is going to make us free forever. We're going to rule the nations forever. That's what Christ is telling us right there. Verse 36, come on. Verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Because we're going to rule forever. We're going to be free indeed. Meaning what? We're going to be free forever. We're going to rule forever. That's what Christ is telling us right there. If the Son therefore shall make you free, when he comes to deliver us, we shall be free indeed. We're going to be free forever. We're going to rule forever. We're going to live forever. That's what he's saying right there. Get that in Luke 1, 68. Because that's what he's saying. If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Watch this. Read it. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Come on. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. You see that thing? Blessed be the Lord God of the Israelites, because he has visited and redeemed his people. He redeemed, he redeemed, he redeemed us from what? From the old covenant into the new covenant. Okay, go ahead. Hold that. Get that in Galatians 4 verse 4. Galatians 4 and 4 so we understand what is being said here. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Read what you got. Galatians chapter 4 verse 4. Read. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. The law of childbirth. When the fullness of time was come. This is a, this is a heavy verse. Very heavy verse right here. He's talking about during the time of Christ when Christ was going to be born and he's also making reference to these last days. Understand that. Go ahead. To redeem them that were under the law. To redeem them that was under the law. Which law? The law of animal sacrifice. Hold this. Give me that in Psalm 50 verse, Psalm 50 verse 5. To redeem them that were under the law. Okay. Psalms chapter 50, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have Come made on. a covenant with me by sacrifice. You see that? Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. So go back to Galatians 4, verse 5 again. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Read. To redeem them that were under the law. You see that? To redeem them that were under the law of animal sacrifice. Read. That we might receive the adoption of sons. You see that thing? That we might receive the adoption of sons. The sons of God. That's what he's talking about right there. That we might, what, we might receive the adoption of sons. Get that in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Because the apostle Paul explained the same thing that we're reading here. Okay? Hebrews 9 verse 15. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Come on. And for his cause... He is the mediator of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. 
You see that by the means of death, it is for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. He's saying the same thing we just read in Galatians 4 and 5, the same thing we just read in Psalm 50 verse 5, because it says what? Gather my sins together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Guess what? Under the old covenant, we made a covenant with the Lord by sacrifice. Now we are redeemed into the new covenant under Christ. You understand? That's the same thing we just read in Luke 1 verse 68. Okay, come on, read that again, verse 15. Hebrews, read it. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Come on. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Mm. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that they which are called, which is the Israelites, the same people that was redeemed under what? The First Testament. It says, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. The same promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. You understand? That's what he's talking about right there. Go back to Luke now. Chapter 1, verse 68 again. Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Go ahead. Bless me the Lord God of Israel, for mm. he has visited and redeemed his people. You see that? He has visited and redeemed his people. Go ahead, read. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. That horn of salvation is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, our king. Go ahead. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. From the beginning, guess what? It was prophesied that we are going to be redeemed from the hands of our enemies by the Messiah. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. You see that? That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Go back to now. Go back to John now. John chapter 8 verse 36. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Read that. John chapter 8 now, verse 36. Now we, are, we, are, we, now we have a better understanding because Luke 168 is twofold. It goes into the time when Christ redeemed from the old covenant into the new covenant. It's also talking about the second coming of the Messiah when he's going to redeem us from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Read John 8, 36. John chapter 8, verse 36. Come on. If the Son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. We are going to be free indeed because we're going to live forever. We're going to rule forever. You understand? We're going to be free forever. No more captivity. No more captivity. That's what the Lord is telling us right there. But there are stipulations in us getting the kingdom of heaven on earth. There are stipulations to that. We're not going to get it for free. We must labor in this truth. We must show ourselves worthy to the most high God that we deserve eternal life. It's not going to be given to us on a silver plate. Understand that thing. We need to understand that. Get that in 2nd Ezra chapter 9. We're not going to get it for free. Okay, the Most High will not hand the kingdom over to us for free. We must prove our worth to the Most High God. 2nd Ezra chapter 9, read verse 7 now. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be everyone able. Everyone that shall be what? And everyone that shall be saved. You see that every, and everyone that shall be saved, every one of the 12 tribes of Israel that shall be saved by the second coming of the Messiah. Go ahead. And shall be able to escape by his works. You are only going to be able to escape by your works. The works that you put in this truth. That's how you're going to escape. Go ahead. And by faith, mm. whereby ye have believed. You see, that is two things that is where we're going to escape by. Our works and our faith, wherein we believe. You understand? That's what he's saying. Works, faith, and works. Faith and works is not faith only. It's not works only. It's not just works, but it's faith also. It's both. Faith and works. You cannot have one without the other. You cannot just have works, but you don't have faith. Neither can you just have faith without works. Because your works will prove your faith. Read that again, verse 7. Come on. Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith. 
whereby ye have believed. You see that? So we must prove ourselves worthy to the Most High. You understand? We must prove ourselves worthy to the Most High God. Watch this. Give me that in, um, get that in Colossians, okay? Give me Colossians real quick. Colossians, because the Apostle Paul, you understand? You know what? Give me Ephesians 4 and 1. I think that's what I want. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says he's the prisoner of the Lord. What does he mean he's a prisoner? That means, guess what? He's constrained by the love of Christ. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Corinthians, okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is 14. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is 14. The love of Christ constrained us, okay? Watch this. You cannot do whatever you want. Watch this. Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For the love of Christ constraineth us. You see that? The love of Christ constraineth us. It constrains us to the laws of God. It disciplines us to keep God's commandments, no matter how hard it is, because why? It's worth doing, because we're going to get eternal life. Read. Because we thus judge mm -hmm. that if one die for all, then we're all dead. Dead to our dead to sin. You understand? How should we live now? Get that in Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Romans chapter 6 verse 1. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue breaking God's laws because now we are under, we are under grace? Read. God forbid. Meaning no. God forbid. Come on. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You see what he's asking? He says, how shall we that are now under Christ, that are dead to our sins, live any longer therein? How are we supposed to live now under grace, under Christ? Get that in Titus 2 verse 11. This is how we live under Christ or under grace. Read it. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Watch this. Read. Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Come on. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's what grace is going to teach us. Now how shall we live? Now that we are dead to sin, live any longer therein? This is what we do. Grace, the grace that we are now under is going to teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly, sober-minded, with a sound mind, righteously keeping God's commandments to be blameless, and godly keeping God's commandments in this present and wicked demonic world. Our job is to do that thing, to prove our worth to the most High God that we deserve eternal life. You understand? Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Read verse 14 again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. Read. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because with us judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. You see that the love of Christ is constrained us to keep God's commandments, to remember what our Lord and Savior did for us, that we can, we may have a chance to get the kingdom back that we lost because of our wickedness. You understand? That's what we need to understand. We need to remember that thing. Go back to Ephesians now. Chapter 4, verse 1 again. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherein you are called. You see that we must walk worthy of the vocation wherein we are, wherewith we are called. The vocation wherewith we are called is the job that we're called to do. The job we're called to do is as we must walk worthy of it. We must prove ourselves to be worthy to the Most High. You understand? Because the Most High don't need us. Understand it. Everyone can be replaced. Understand that. The most I don't need us. Our job is to prove our worth unto him. Get that in Colossians 3 verse 1. Watch this. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Read. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above 
We must seek the things which are above, where the Lord is. Where the Lord is, that's where wisdom is. Come on. Where Christ teaches on the right hand of God. Those are the things that we must seek, which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of the Most High God. Go ahead. Set your affection on things above, mm -hmm. not on things on the earth. You see that? We must set our affection on things that are above, not on the things that are upon the earth. Because the things that are above, that's where the Lord sits. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon. We must, seek, we must seek the things which are above. Each and every man and woman in here, that's the mindset we all must have. Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 21. Read. Right? Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except God gave her me, and that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was. You see that? So we must remember, we must always remember, wisdom is a gift from the Most High. The wisdom that is written in this Bible is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Okay, come on. I prayed unto the Lord and besought him, and with my whole heart I said. Read chapter 9 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 1. Read. O God of my fathers and Lord of mercy, who has made all things with thy word. All things were made with the word of God. That's what we read in Genesis 1. Come on. And ordained man through thy wisdom. You see that he ordained man. That man was Adam. He ordained man through his wisdom. Come on. That he should have dominion over the creatures which thou hast made. That's what we read in Genesis says what? You must be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and have dominion over the creatures that the Lord has made. Come on. And order the world according to equity and righteousness. Right. And execute judgment with an upright heart. Come on. Watch this. Give me wisdom that seated by thy throne and reject me not from among thy children. You see what he's saying? He says, give me wisdom that seated by thy throne. Because whose wisdom? Christ is the wisdom of the Most High. It also says, seek the things which are above and not the things which are upon the earth. Because the things which are above is wisdom sitting on the right hand of the Most High God. That's who, who's that? That's Jesus the Christ. The Spirit of Christ, that's what we pray for. We pray, for, we pray to the Most High God that he has mercy upon us to give us the Spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, that we may overcome the things that are oppressing us upon this earth. Understand that thing. Get that in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Let me get that actually. First Corinthians 1 real quick. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. Just to explain that the wisdom is Christ. Christ is the wisdom of the Most High. Read that. First Corinthians 1 verse 24. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. Go ahead. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. You see that Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of the Most High God. Now give me Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Read verse 14. Let's start there. Because we need to understand our spiritual growth. If we want to move to the next level, guess what? We must understand the steps in which we must take to overcome. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9 verse 14. Come on. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. And our devices are but uncertain. You see that the thoughts of mortal men are miserable. How miserable are they? Hold this. Give me that in Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. He says the thoughts of mortal men. Because right now we mortal men. We're not immortal yet. We mortal. So our thoughts are miserable. You understand? Watch this. Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? You see what he's saying? The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Because why? It's so desperate and wicked and evil and demonic that guess what? That our minds have become what? Miserable. Because we think evil thoughts. You understand? Read verse 10. Come on. I, the Lord, search the heart. Mm -hmm. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You see what the Bible is saying, meaning your works. The Lord says he tries the way we think, our reins. 
even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. It's not going to be an accident. You understand? It's going to be based on what? Our thought process and the fruits of our doing. That's what, and our ways. That's how the Lord deals with us. Go back to wisdom of Solomon chapter 9, verse 14. So if we want to overcome the, dis, the, the minds that amuses upon many things, the mind that is desperately wicked, you understand? The Lord gives us solutions on how to overcome that. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Come For on. the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and mm -hmm. our devices are but uncertain. You see that our devices are but uncertain. Our thought process is but uncertain. Let me show you how uncertain it is. Give me a lot in Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3. Okay. Lamentations chapter 3. It might be verse 37. Let me hear it. Shitting from the hip here. Hold on a second. Mm. It's fine. I think I'll use this verse. Give me the book of, uh, give me Proverbs. Yeah. Our devices are but uncertain. Okay. Um, watch this. Give me that in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 20. I think I'll use that one. Give me Proverbs chapter 20 and verse, verse 24. Proverbs 20 verse 24. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 24. Yeah, actually, yeah, we're going to read that. We're going to go back to Lamentations. Proverbs 20 verse 24. Read that for me. Proverbs chapter 20 on, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. Read. How can a man then understand his own way? Mm -hmm. How can a man then understand his own way? Whatever you do, you must understand. You don't have free will. You do not have that. The most has the one that is in control of everything that we do. You understand? He's in control. Watch this. Give me Lamentations 3, verse 37. Read that. Lamentations 3, 37. Come on. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 37. Come on. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, when the Lord commandeth it not? You see that? Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass? Which man says something and it comes to pass, and, and the Lord did not command it? You see that meaning what? Whatever will come to pass is what the Lord has commanded, and we must use the word of God to do that. Man's devices are but uncertain. Understand what King Solomon is saying. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 9. Read verse 14 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9, verse 14. Read. For the thoughts of mortal men are miserable, and our devices are but uncertain. You see that thing? Why? Because the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Next verse. Come on. For the corruptible body presses down the soul, mm. and the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. You see what the problem is? The corruptible body presses down the soul because we've got corruptible bodies now. Our bodies are not incorruptible. We are not immortal. We are mortal men. That's the same thing he said in verse 14. The thoughts of mortal men. The mortal man is explained in verse 15 when it says, "For the, because the corruptible body is the mortal body which presses down the soul, meaning your mind. Your spirit wants to break free and do what the Bible says but our corruptible bodies, our mortal bodies, they press down our soul. They fight against the word of God that is in our spirit. That our spirit wants to do the word of God, but this evil flesh is pressing down the mind and is pressing down the soul. Go ahead. And our earthy tabernacle does what? And the earthy tabernacle weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Our earthy tabernacle, it says it, it weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Why? Because our minds, they muse upon many things. Our mind, one minute your thought is here, the next minute is there. The next minute you think about something different. Then our thought is all over the place. Because why? This earthy tabernacle, it weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. Why? Because we're mortal now. You understand? We've got corruptible bodies. We need the word of God to guide us to stay disciplined and diligent. Understand that. Galatians 5 verse 17. Read that. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. For the flesh lasted against the Read. spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, 
so that he cannot do the things that he would. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying is the flesh lust against the spirit. The mortal, the mortal mind, the mortal, his mortal bodies we got, they lust against the spirit. They go against the spirit of our minds that has been renewed with the spirit of Christ. That he shall not fulfill what? It says, and the spirit against the flesh. The spirit now is fighting to crucify the flesh. You understand with the word of God? It says, these are contrary one to the other. There's a constant fight on a daily basis. Throughout the day, 24 hours a day, there's a constant fight that you cannot do the things that you would. The things that we would do is what? God's commandments. That's the things that our spirit loves to do. God's laws. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Read. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. If ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. The law he is making reference to the law of animal sacrifice because that was the confusion in the church of Galatia. You understand? If you led by the spirit, meaning what? The spirit that quickeneth you. Get that in John 63. There's, we keep God's commandments under Christ. The death that are under, the, under his death now. You understand? That's the, the spirit is the one that quickeneth us now. We what you got. John 6, 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. Mm -hmm. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? The words that he spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. So if we want to overcome and be led by the spirit, guess what? We, are, we cannot be led by the law of animal sacrifice. Guess what? Because the laws of God they're going to what? They're going to change the way we think. We have to renew the spirits of our minds in the spirit of Christ. That's the only way we are going to overcome. Get that in Revelations now. Chapter 12. Revelation 12. Okay. Read verse 11. Watch this. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11. Come on. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. The only way we're going to overcome, we're going to overcome by the blood of the blood of Christ. That's the only way. There's no two ways about it. The only way we are going to overcome is by the blood, is through the blood of Christ. Come on. And by the word of their testimony. Mm. And they love not their lives unto the death. They love not their lives unto the death. Meaning what? We repented. We are, we are repenting. We are keeping God's commandments. We don't love our lives unto the death. Meaning what? We are not willing to die because we want to satisfy the lust of our flesh. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So we are going to overcome by the blood of Christ. That's the only way. Our faith in Christ is the only way we are going to overcome our sins. Understand that. Get that in Revelation chapter 2. Okay, Revelation chapter 2. Read verse 25. We're going to read down. Watch this. Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. Come on. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. That which we have already in our hands is the Holy Scriptures in our hands to comfort us. Get that in First Maccabees 12. This is what we have in our hands already. Okay. That which ye have already, hold fast till I come. This is what we have already. Okay. First Maccabees 12 verse 9. Read that. First Maccabees chapter 12 verse 9. Mm -hmm. therefore we also albeit we need none of these things for mm -hmm. that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us you see that you see what we have in our hands to comfort us the holy books of scripture the scriptures the laws of god is what's going to give us comfort go back to where was that now revelation chapter 2 verse 25 come on but that which ye have already Hold fast till I come. That which we have already is the Holy Scriptures in our hands to comfort us. We must hold fast to that. We must hold it fast. Read. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You see that? Him that overcometh. We must overcome what? We must overcome our sins. The only way for us to overcome, we're going to overcome by the blood of the Lamb. We're not going to overcome 
through osmosis. We're not going to overcome through Christianity. We're not going to overcome through our own will. We're going to overcome through the blood of the Lamb. Read that again, verse 26. Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You see that? He's going to give us power over the nations. The nations that are oppressing us right now. The nations that hate and despise us. The nations that put us in slavery, that oppress us during apartheid and are still oppressing us during... Apartheid is still alive and well. It's not gone. Look at what's happening in Stellenbosch. Look at that Edomite boy that peed on one of the Israelite brothers' um, laptop and all that. I mean, what the hell is this? Because apartheid is alive and well, is not gone. The Lord is saying, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We're going to rule the nations with a rod of iron. Next verse, go ahead. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. You see that? Christ is going to rule these nations with a rod of iron. Come on. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, mm -hmm. even as I received of my father. Even as he received of his father. We need to understand that the only way we are going to overcome is by the blood of the lamb. That's the only way. That's the only way out. Understand that thing. That's why we must seek the things which are above and not the things which are upon this earth. Because the things which are upon this earth is just garbage. It's not, it's not for our benefit. It's not for our cause. Because the nations, they are ruling on this earth. And they are oppressing the people of the Most High God. That's why we need a savior. That's why we need, us, we need to be delivered from captivity. Understand that thing. So now, for you, each and every one of us, to move on to the next level, to grow spiritually, here's what we need to understand. Get that in 1 Peter 2. Okay, 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2 verse 1. Watch this. First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all mm. guide and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. You see that? We must put aside malice, guile, hypocrisies, envies, and all evil speaking. We must put these things aside. That's what the Lord is saying. The Lord says we must put these things aside. That envy part right there. Watch this. I'm going to show you something this day. Because sometimes I like to go to TikTok. There's a few things I'll be checking out. You understand? Now I'm tired of seeing this Ronaldo, whatever this guy is. Watch this. But I'm going to show you something. Let me share my screen so you can see. Okay, hold on a second. Mm, yep, let me share my screen. Now let's go to TikTok. Now, this is bad man. Anyway, everybody knows bad man in the hip hop world and all that. He said yes, something which I thought it was interesting. Now, watch this. He from a mile away. He a nigga that don't know you. But a nigga that envy you, he around you. Mm. And that shit is more detrimental than anything, brother. Mm. You got to watch envy over hate. See, hate could be from a distance, and you don't give a fuck now, about now, that. Now, let's play the video but again. I want you to read First Peter 2 verse 1. Read First Peter 2 verse 1 again. I want you to hear this thing. Okay, read what you got. First Peter chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies mm. and envies and all evil speakings, so now the apostle Peter is saying, listen, you want to grow? He says, put a lay aside all these things, malice, guile, which is bitterness. Malice is having malicious intent. Guile, bitterness, hypocrisies, and envies, and all evil speaking. I'm going to deal with envy just for a second. So let's play the video now. You know, he from a mile away. He a nigga that don't know you. But a nigga that envy you, he around you. Mm. And that shit is more detrimental than anything, brother. Mm. And you got to watch envy over hate. See, hate could be from a distance, and you don't give a fuck about that. He can't touch you. But envy is close to you, and you mm. got to be prepared for that. A hater, he from a mile away. He a nigga mm. that don't know you. But a nigga that envy you, he around you. Mm. And that shit is more detrimental than anything, brother. Mm. You got to watch envy over hate. See, hate could be from a distance, and you don't give a fuck about that. He can't touch you. 
but envy is close to so 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 there's some heavy stuff right there some heavy stuff some heavy stuff okay hey though he from that's some heavy stuff that's some heavy stuff right there all praise to the most high so the reason why i'm touching on this is because it is true envy that thing is dangerous man envy is dangerous so you brothers and sisters that you know you've got the spirit of envy upon you you better make sure that you let that thing go you better sh make sure that you repent from that demonic spirit envy is dangerous watch this give me that in wisdom of solomon 6 23 wisdom of solomon chapter 6 verse 23 because king solomon spoke about this thing okay somebody that envies you they are close to you they are next to you they see you all the time and all that guess what they hate your guts i'm gonna tell you straight envy is hatred now read that wisdom of solomon 6 verse 23 come on wisdom of solomon chapter 6 verse 23 come on neither will i go with consuming envy you see that thing envy is consuming envy is a consumptive spirit you understand envy consumes you you think about it all the time you think about how much you hate and despise the person that you envy that's what the lord is saying you understand it hits you the pitch of your stomach he says neither will i go with consuming envy envy is a consuming spirit it will consume you from the inside out go ahead for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom because such a man will have no fellowship with wisdom why because give me that in proverbs 27 verse 4 proverbs chapter 27 verse 4 watch this proverbs chapter 27 verse 4 mm -hmm. wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy you see what he's saying is it but who is able to stand before envy is this wrath is cruel but anger is outrageous but who is able to stand before envy because envy like Batman is saying the person that envies you they are around you they are looking at what you've got they are looking at the things you do how you do them how you are getting blessed you know all of that guess what we talk about in this truth now we coming into this truth the lord is what the lord is going to deliver unto us spiritual gifts some brothers they have envy about that thing guess what you are not going to grow in this truth understand that sisters they be envying other sisters for what they've got sister you better repent understand that okay go back to first peter's now first peter's chapter 2 verse 1 again first peter's chapter 2 verse 1 read wherefore laying aside all malice and all mm. guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings and all evil speaking come on as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby you see what he's saying as newborn babes as we coming into this truth born again is as we must desire the sincere milk of the word that she may grow thereby guess what we must grow in this truth we must grow in this truth we need growth in this truth spiritually we must grow congregationally we must grow as a congregation you understand so we want to move to the next level guess what there's things that the lord is telling us to do we must do those things understand that thing give me that in galatians 6 verse 3 watch this galatians chapter 6 and verse 3 read that galatians chapter 6 verse 3 mm -hmm. for if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing he deceiveth himself you see what he's saying if you think you're something and when you're nothing you deceive yourself so the lord is saying don't don't do that stay in the spirit humble yourself before the lord of god and the lord will exalt you go ahead but let every man prove his own work and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another you see what the bible is saying is this, but let every man prove his own work you must prove your own work you must prove your work to be worthy you understand and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another you're not going to rejoice in another he's not saying you cannot say oh praise to the most high god the lord is blessing that brother he's not saying he's not talking about that he's saying you'll all you'll be able to to see the fruits of your own labor that's what he's going into come on for every man shall bear his own burden every man shall bear his own burden you you have to carry your own weight you must understand that 
Because each and every one of us, we all dealing with stuff. Whatever pesky sin that does not want to go away, that stubborn and demonic sin that does not want to go away, that's what this is going into. We all must pay, everybody must carry their own burden. What is the burden? That sin that cannot go away. That sin that is difficult to get rid of. That sin that keeps coming back over and over and messing you up. That's what it's going into. Go ahead. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. You see that thing? Go ahead. Watch this. Read. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He says, God is not mocked. Whatever you plant, you're going to reap that. You understand? You cannot plant a banana and an apple comes out. No. You cannot plant bitterness and expect that something good will, the spirit of joy will come out. No. You cannot plant the spirit of envy and think something glorious will, no, 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 no. You're not going to get that. Whatever you plant, that's what's going to grow. That's what we need to understand. Each and every one of us. Read. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. You see that thing is if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. What? Meaning what? If you sow things that are pertain to the flesh, the lust of your flesh, whatever lust you have, whether it's envy, hatred, anger, bitterness, whatever it is, that's exactly what, guess what? It says what? Read that verse again, verse 8. Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. You're going to reap corruption. Because you're going to get destroyed. You understand? Read. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You see what he's saying? But if you sow it to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. If the son shall therefore or make you free, you shall be free indeed. Because you, you sow the things of the spirit, you're going to reap everlasting life. You're going to live forever. You're going to rule forever. You understand? That's what he says, everlasting life. You are going to live forever upon this earth. That's what the Lord is saying right there to us. Next verse. Go ahead. And let us not be weary in well-doing. Mm -hmm. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You see what he's saying? If we don't give up, if we don't give in to our sins that are stubborn, guess what? The Lord is promising us, he says, for in due season, we shall reap. We're going to reap the, 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 what? the fruits of the kingdom, the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the kingdom, the fruits of immortal life, eternal life. That's the fruits we're going to reap. That's what the Lord is telling us. He's promising us, and these words will not fail. The only thing that we must not do, we must not faint in this truth. Understand that. Let's get some examples. You understand? Give me that in Sirach 2. Okay? Ecclesiasticus. Because we're all dealing with, our, with sins. We're all dealing with stubborn sins. You understand? So we must be honest with ourselves and examine ourselves so we can get rid of them. The Lord have mercy upon us. Sirach chapter 2. Read verse 10. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 10. Read. Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The Lord never despised anybody that called upon him in sincerity and in truth. So we must look at the generations of old, how they handled the, the, the issues, the challenges, the trials that come up, came upon them. What did they do? Did they put their trust in the Lord? Yes. Those that put their trust in the Lord, they were able to overcome. Understand that. Now watch this. Let's get, give me, give me that in second Esdras. Okay, give me second Esdras. Second Esdras. I want you to, I want you to see something. Pay close attention. Second Esdras, second Esdras 5. We're going to read verse, second Esdras chapter 5. Read verse, read, read verse, verse 12. Second Esdras chapter 5 verse 12. Mm -hmm. At the same time shall men hope but nothing obtained. They shall labor, but their ways shall not prosper. You see what he's saying? Because if you faint, you're going to hope, but you know what? Your hope will be in vain. You shall labor, but your ways will not prosper. Why? Because you fainting. You're looking back. You put your hand to the plow, look back, there will not be prosperity. You're not going to overcome nothing. That's what the Lord is saying. Come on. Watch this. And now the angel, this is Uriel the angel. 
He's going to tell Ezra what needs to happen for him to overcome these pesky sins. Watch this. Read. To show thee such tokens I have lived. And if mm -hmm. thou wilt pray again and weep as now and fast seven days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. You see what the Lord, you see what the, the angel Uriel is telling Ezra? He said, listen, if you pray, you see prayer is important. There's power in prayer. Don't take prayer for granted. No. That's how we communicate with the Most High. That's how we cry unto the Lord. We pray unto him. And he says, weep as now, meaning when, have a contrite spirit. Be sorry for the things that you've done, that you're still doing, that you're struggling to overcome. Keep it real with the Most High. You understand? He says, and fast seven days, thou shalt hear great, greater things. He says, fast seven days. He says, you must fast. You see the solution? Prayer. Be sincere with the Lord, keep it 100, and fast. You see what he's saying? So don't take for granted prayer. Don't take for granted being sincere with the Lord. Don't take for granted the power of fasting also. Read. Then I awaked, and an extreme fearfulness went through all my body, and my mind was troubled mm -hmm. so that it fainted. Read. So the angel that was come to talk with me held me, comforted me, and set me up upon my feet. You see that? So the angel Uriel comforted Ezra and set him upon his feet. He's a stand-up man fully. Come on. And in the second night, it came to pass that Celestial, the captain of the people, came unto me, saying, Where hast thou been? And why is thy countenance so heavy? Read. Knowest thou not that Israel is committed unto thee in the land of their captivity? So now Salathian was the captain. Salathian is asking Ezra, don't you know that Israel is committed unto you in the lands of their captivity? Come on. Up then and eat bread. Come on. And forsake us not. Mm. As the shepherd that leaves his flock in the hands of cold wolves. Now watch this, because we are in the, in the, we are in the midst of our enemies. We are surrounded by cruel wolves, our enemies that hate and despise us. Read. Then said I unto him, Go thy ways from me, and come not nigh me. And he heard what I said, and went from me. So Salatia listened to him, listened to what Ezra said unto him, and he followed the command. Now watch what happens next. Read. And so I fasted seven days, moaning and weeping, like as Uriel the angel commanded me. You see what he did? He fasted seven days, mourning and weeping. Remember what we read in verse 13. Read verse 13 again. Second Ezra chapter 5, verse 13. Mm -hmm. To show thee such tokens I have lived, and if thou wilt pray again, and weep as now, and fast seven days, thou shalt hear yet greater things. You see what he's saying? He says, pray, weep, and fast. Jump down to verse 19 now. Read verse 20 again. Verse 20. And so I fasted seven days, moaning and weeping, like as Uriel the angel commanded me. He did exactly as he was commanded. He fasted seven days, moaning and weeping, as Uriel the angel commanded him. Go ahead. And after seven days, so it was, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. Mm -hmm. And my soul recovered the spirit of understanding and I began to talk with the Most High again. You see that thing right there? That's one of the benefits of fasting, weeping, and prayer. It says, then it says, and I fasted after seven days, so it was, that the thoughts of my heart were very grievous unto me again. Because now he began to really see what's going on. And when he, when he started to see what's going on, the Lord opening his spirit up, he started to bother him. You understand? His spirit bent within him. That's what's going on here. Read verse 22 again now. Come on. Second Ezra, chapter 5, verse 22. And my Read. soul recovered the spirit of understanding, and I began to talk mm. with the Most High again. So if you want your spirit to recover, you understand? If you want your soul to recover the spirit of understanding and to talk with the Most High again, these are the tools. Fasting, weeping, you understand, and prayer. We must give ourselves to fasting, prayer, and weeping and moaning. For what? For, the, for what Israel is going through. You understand? For what your nation is going through. For what you are going through. You want the Lord to hear you. That's what the Lord is saying. That's the, this is the next level now. This is the next level. You want to break free? 
You want to be able to overcome, use pesky things that don't want to go away? This is the recipe right here. Understand that thing. Now watch this. Give me second Exodus now. Second Exodus chapter six. Second Exodus chapter six, read verse. Second Exodus chapter six, read verse 31. Watch this. Start of verse 29. Second Exodus chapter six, verse 29. Watch this. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And when he talked with me, behold, I looked by little and little upon him before whom I stood. Read. And these words said he unto me, I am come to show thee the time of the night to come. Mm -hmm. If thou wilt pray Read. yet more and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. You see what the angel is telling him? is says, if you will pray yet more and fast seven days again, I shall tell thee greater things by day than I have heard. This is Uriel speaking to him. Go ahead, read. For thy voice is heard before the Most High. For the mighty mm -hmm. had seen thy righteous dealing. He had seen also thy chest. You see that? The mighty man, the Most High, hold on, the Most High has seen Ezra's so what is his righteous dealings, meaning he's dealing righteously, and he has also seen his chastity, meaning what? He chastised his flesh with the word of God. He disciplined his life with God's commandments. Come on. Verse 32, one more again. Second Ezra, chapter 6, verse 32. For thy Come voice on. is heard before the Most High, for the mighty had seen thy righteous dealing. He had seen also thy chastity, which thou has had ever since thy youth. Ever since thy youth. That's why it says, in thy youth, gather instruction from thy youth up. When you come into this truth, your job is to gather instruction. Even until you die, you must still be, even when you grow older, still always have the spirit of wanting to learn. Okay, go ahead. And therefore, come on. has he sent me to show thee all these things and to say unto thee, be of good comfort and fear not. Right. And hasten not with the times that are past to think vain things that thou mayest not hasten from the latter times. Come on, watch this, read. And it came to pass after this that I wept again and fasted seven days in like manner that I might fulfill the three weeks which he told me. You see that? He says that he might fulfill the three weeks which he told him. That means the first week he did seven. And then again, he spoke to the angel. He did another, another seven. He spoke to the angel. He did another seven, you understand, which was total 21 days. Go ahead. And in the eighth night was my heart vexed within me again. And I began to speak before mm. the Most High. You see that? And he began to speak before the Most High. Meaning what? When you speak before the Most High, the Lord will hear you. Why? Because you are willing to do what? To chastise the flesh with the word of God, to deny the flesh, to please the most like God, so you can be able to hear the, the, to hear when you pray. So that's what we all want. We, we want the most like God to be able to hear our prayers. We want the Lord to be able to answer our prayers. We want the Lord to be able to, when we speak, the Lord pays attention, he stops what he's doing, he listens to what the, he, us, his servants have to say. That's another level. That's the next level in the spiritual growth. We must get to that level. We're not talking about the brother between seven days. We're not saying that. But I'm showing you what our forefathers did. They fasted. They prayed. They kept God's commandments while they praying and fasting. They weep. They wept. They show, they show what? They had a contrite heart. They were sincere. They were sorrowful about what they was going through. And wanting to please the most, I said, Father, help me. I want to overcome this thing. Okay? Understand that. Now watch this. Now give me, give me the book of Daniel. Okay, give me Daniel 10. You know what? Before we get there, let's get the book of Judith. Okay. Judith chapter 8. Because our foremother Judith, she also did that. For you sisters now, watch this. Judith chapter 8, start verse 1. Judith chapter 8, verse 1. Read. Now at that time, Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Mirari the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elshia, the son of Ananias, the son of Gedeon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Akito, 
the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Shemael, the son of Salasadai, the son of Israel. Three. And Manasseh was a husband of a tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. So Manasseh was a husband who died in the barley harvest from a heat stroke. Go ahead, watch this. You know, that's it on there. No, no, keep reading. Read verse 3. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head, and he fell on his bed, and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothaim and Pelamu. Read. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. So she was a widow three years and four months. Watch this. Her husband died now, okay? What did our foremother do? Because guess what? She's, guess what? She's mourning. She's weeping for the dead, you understand? For her, her dead husband. Get, hold this. Give me that in Sirach. Okay, give me Sirach 38. Sirach chapter 38, verse 16. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 38, verse 16. Come on. My son, let tears fall down over the dead mm -hmm. and begin to lament as thou hast suffered great harm thyself and then cover his body according to the custom and neglect not his burial. He says, don't neglect his burial. So he says, let tears fall down over the dead. Meaning you must mourn for the dead. Go ahead, verse 17. Weep bitterly and make great mourn and use lamentation. Mm -hmm. As he is worthy and that a day or two, lest thou be evil spoken of and then comfort thyself for thy heaviness. You see what he's saying? Comfort yourself for your heaviness. He says, weep bitterly and make great moan and use lamentation. So he's saying, listen, you need to mourn for the dead. People die, you mourn for them. You understand? You lose a loved one, of course you mourn for them. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying right here. That's what our foremother did. So she was not going through something light. She was going through something heavy. It's a heavy ordeal. Her husband just died. Now she's left by herself. Obviously, that's the love of her life. Understand that. Next verse. Watch this. But I want to show you how our foremother dealt with grief. Watch this. She understood verse 18, which is why the solution that she applied, we're going to read about it next. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 18. For of heaviness cometh death, mm -hmm. and the heaviness of the heart breaketh strength. You see what he's saying? He says, for of heaviness cometh death. Because if you weep forever, you don't recover. Guess what? You're going to die. You understand? And the heaviness of the heart breaketh your strength. It's going to break your strength. So to overcome that, here's what our former the Judith did. Judith chapter 8 now. Read verse 5. Watch this. Judith chapter 8 verse 5. Mm -hmm. And she made her a tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wear her widow's apparel. He wear a widow's apparel. That's why today there are four, our parents and all that, grandmothers and all that. When somebody dies, their husband and all that, they be changing. They be wearing clothes, like black clothes and all that to mourn for their dead. Yeah, go ahead. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, mm. save the eaves of the Sabbath and the Sabbath and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feasts and solemn days of the house of Israel. You see what he's saying? He says, and she fasted all the days of her widowhood. Remember, she was a widow three years and four months. He says, she fasted all the days of her widowhood, except for the eaves of the Sabbath, meaning Friday she didn't fast. On the Sabbath also she did not fast. And the Sabbath and the eaves of the new moons, because guess what? If the new moon, let's say, is on Monday, on Sunday she didn't fast. You understand? And the solemn days of the house of Israel. That's what she did. So you could imagine, Guri, she was fasting for how many days on average a week? About five days a week. That she was that she, she would fast for the period of what? Three years and four months. Just think about that thing. Because what she understood that. Not only that, but she wanted to do what she set the right example for the sisters as well. She set the right example for them. That don't feel sorry for yourself. You must mourn for your husband and all that. Mourn for your husband, you understand? As according to the man, because he's worth. 
Not only that, but for you to be able to overcome so you don't die of a broken heart, he says you must do what? Fast. That's what she did. She fasted. She afflicted her soul. She connected to the Most High. She became closer and closer to the Holy, to the Holy, to the, to the Holy One of Israel. That's what she did. And because of what she did, read verse 29. Judas, chapter 8, verse 29. No, read verse 28, actually. Read verse 28. Because you know what? Sisters, they love the book of Judith. You understand? But they don't understand the spirit our foremother was moving in. UBC sisters, they love to gravitate towards Deborah and all that. Jezebels, manly women, they do that. Now in the book of Judith, Judith don't move like that. Judith, our foremother, she was in the full spirit. We just read it. This is what she did. Okay? Now, the fruits of that, read verse 28. Watch this. Judy, chapter 8, verse 28. Go ahead. Then said Osias to her, All that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. Mm. And there is none that may again say thy words. You see, there's no one that can go against what you are saying. Because it's what? It's biblical. What you're saying is of the Lord. You understand? And the man was able to say, wait a minute, this woman is speaking some sense here. Okay, go ahead. And, and For this don't get it twisted, she was not the leader of the men. Okay, go ahead. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. You see that? You see, no, 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 I want you to understand that. It says, for this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested. That means Judith had a good name. She had a good reputation. She had a good report among men, among the men of Israel, among the judges of Israel. She had a good name. She had a good reputation. You understand? She had a good report because of what she was doing. She, had, she was fasting. Okay, go ahead. For this is not the first day wherein thy wisdom is manifested, but from the beginning of thy days, all the people have known thine understanding. Because mm. the disposition of thine heart is good. Because the character of your mind is good. This verse 31. Watch this. Verse 31. Therefore now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman. And the mm. Lord will send us rain to fill our assistance, and we shall faint no more. You see what is, is this is the man speaking. Because Judith, she had that type of spirit. Meaning what? They understood. She, they knew. The men of Israel knew that Judith was a godly woman. They, they knew that thing. They understood all that. That's what they knew. But what did she do to end that? Guess what she did? She fasted. She gave her life to fasting and prayer and mourning and weeping. That's what she did. This is the example that Jew sisters can follow. You understand? Now, give me Daniel 10 verse 1. Watch this. Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. Go ahead. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. He thought he, under he had understanding of the vision that was shown unto him. But I want you to pay close attention to what's going on here. Keep going. Go ahead. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Hold on. Read that again, verse 2. Daniel, chapter 10, verse 2. Mm -hmm. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. So Daniel was mourning three full weeks. How many, how many days is that? 21 days Daniel did that thing. What was he doing? Keep reading. Verse 3. Read. I ate no pleasant bread. Mm. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Because what was Daniel doing? He was fasting. He fasted for three full weeks, 21 days Daniel was doing this thing. That's why we're reading about the Daniel's wisdom. When you read the book of Daniel, heavy stuff in there for the benefit of his people. Next verse. Go ahead. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidekel. Read. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, 
whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphrates. You see that Christ revealed himself unto Daniel after he did this thing. The Lord will not reveal unto you nothing if you don't show the most high that you're willing to deny your flesh, to apply what is written, to study, you understand, to afflict your soul, okay, to mourn and to weep, to show sincerity and having a contrite heart. That's what the Lord is looking for, you understand? If you think you are a know-it-all, you're not going to listen to nobody else and all that. The Lord is not going to reveal himself unto you. Understand that. Go ahead. His body also was like the barrel, and his face is the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polish brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. You see what is going on? Now the Lord is revealing himself unto Daniel the prophet after he fasted for 21 days. Next verse. Go ahead. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. You understand? So our forefather Daniel, was he not going through things? To, did he not need to overcome things in his life? Of course he did. That's why he fasted for so many days. Why? Because he understood the importance of overcoming those sins. Because those sins, hold this. Give me Jeremiah 5.25. This is the problem right here. Okay? Read that. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, mm -hmm. and your sins have withholden good things from you. You see what the Bible is saying? Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. The wondrous things are of God's laws. Because of sin, listen, sin is a barrier. Sin is a barrier between us and the Lord. So when we break through that barrier with the laws of the Most High, Fasting, weeping, praying, mourning. When we do that, we're gonna break the barrier of the, the barrier of sin, and we will begin to speak with the most high, like we used to in the days of old. Our forefathers understood that. That's why they did it. Okay. So go back to where was that? Daniel chapter 10, verse 7. Daniel chapter 10, verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Mm. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. You see what Daniel is saying? He says, for the men that were with me saw not the vision. They didn't see that vision. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Right? Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. Come on. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. You see what happened now? He says, because remember, he is fasting for 21 days. You think he still has strength in himself? No. You understand? So when you're fasting, afflicting your soul, you're relying on the most like God for your breath, for your strength, for your sight, your vision. You're relying on the most high for everything as we're supposed to even when we're not fasting. Go ahead. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. Mm. For unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. You are trembling. He stood up, though. Go ahead. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand mm. and to chasten thyself before thy God, and thy words were heard. And to chasten thyself before thy God. You see that? And to chasten thyself before thy God. It says, For from the first day, that thou didst set thine heart to understand. You must set your heart to understand what this Bible is saying. And the gateway to understanding is the keeping of God's laws. It says, and to chasten thyself before thy God. Read. Thy words were what? Thy words were heard. Mm. And I am come for thy words. You see that? He says, your words was heard and I'm come for thy words. This is the angel speaking now. Go ahead. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me 
one in 20 days. Mm -hmm. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So who came to help Daniel? Michael the archangel. Michael the archangel came to help Daniel on this wise. The same way Uriel the angel came to help Ezra when he was what? When he was afflicting his soul. Understand that thing. You understand? So what I'm showing you is our forefathers understood the recipe to overcome. The recipes to overcome these pesky sins that do not want to go away. These stubborn sins to break that, that sinful barrier, that barrier of sin that, you are, that, that blocks the communication between us and the Mosai. We need to break through that. We must break through that thing. We must move on to the next level in this truth. We must overcome. Understand that thing. You understand? Give me that in Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Watch this. Our Lord and Savior, the Black Messiah. Read what you got. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Read. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days, he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. You see what was happening? It says he was tempted 40 days and 40 nights by the devil. The devil was tempting him while he was fasting. You understand? Watch this. Go ahead. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Mm, read. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Now, I want you to see something. Read verse 3 again. I'm going to show you something with this verse. Read verse 3 once again. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now, you notice something about this statement that Satan made here? Notice what Satan is saying. And the devil said unto him, If, if thou be the son of God, did the devil not know that he's the son of God? Of course, the Satan knew. Satan knew that he is the son of God. But you see what he's doing? It is as if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be, it be made bread. So what is he doing? He's putting doubt in his mind that he's not the son of God. You see how Satan works? You men understand this? Yes, sir. That's how Satan moves. The, the Satan moves, the way Satan moves is what is to put doubt in your head. Once you have doubt, Satan is taking taken is Satan has taken the seat. Understand that he has taken the wheel and he's in the driver's seat. He's the one in control now because of doubt. That's why he's making the statement the way he's making it. Come on. Luke chapter 4, verse 3. And the devil said unto him. If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Read. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You see how that, that, this is letting you know that Christ, he was, he was what? He gave attendance to reading. That's why he says, it is written. Where did he read it? In the Bible. He read the books. That means he was reading the books of the prophets that came before him. He read them. That's why it says, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Let's see where he gets this from. Give me Deuteronomy 8 verse 3. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. And he humbled Come thee on. and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, mm. that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. You see that? So now he's quoting Moses. He's quoting Moses right here. You understand? He's slaying the devil with the word of God. That's what he's doing. And Christ is teaching us how to fight. You see what he's doing? Meaning what? When Satan comes to your head, he plants a thought in your head. This is how you slay the thought. This is how you destroy the thought. 
This is the Lord. The Lord is teaching us how to fight. That's what he's showing us here. Because we are in a spiritual war. This is a spiritual war. It's a spiritual battle. And Christ is teaching us how to fight back. You understand? Go back to Luke 4 verse 4 again. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Jesus answered him saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. You see that? But by every word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Because the bread is going into the actual physical bread that satisfies the lust of your flesh. But guess what? There's another, there's another bread food that you can eat that satisfies your spirit, which is what? The word of God. God's laws is what feeds your spirit. So, so 40 days and 40 nights, he was feeding his spirit. For 21 days, Daniel was feeding his spirit. For seven days, seven days, and then another seven days, another seven days, Esther, what was he doing? He was feeding the spirit. Our foremother, Judith, what was, he, what was she doing? Five days on average a week, she was feeding her spirit. You understand? That's what she was doing. So what the Lord is showing us here, he's showing us how to fight. Now, give me that in Psalms 144, verse 1. Watch this. Psalms 144. Read verse 1. Psalms chapter 144, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, mm. which teacheth my hands to war and my with fingers what? to fight. Which teacheth my hands to war mm. and my fingers to fight. Which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Read that again. Psalms chapter 144, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Lord, my strength, which teaches my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Because the Lord taught King David how to fight. Now, this is not a physical fight. It's a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual warfare. So guess what? The same way the Lord taught King David his hands to war and his fingers to fight is the same thing today in a spiritual way. Spiritually, the Lord is teaching our hands to war and our fingers to fight. How? By precept upon precept, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how we fight back. The Lord is teaching us how to fight here. Go back to Luke 4 verse 4 again. So we see how Christ taught us to fight back. Read that again. Luke chapter 4 verse 4. And mm. Jesus answered him saying, It is written, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Because when you afflict your soul, guess what you're doing? You're feeding your spirit. You're praying. You're feeding your spirit. You understand? You're weeping and mourning. You're feeding your spirit with the word of God. That's how our forefathers and foremothers overcame. Understand that. You want to break through that barrier? To move on to the next level, you understand? Guess what? You need to sit down and examine yourself and understand, listen, this thing has been troubling me as long as I can remember. It's time to overcome now. It's time to destroy that thing. It's time to fight back. You understand? The most that God has given us the greatest weapon on earth, we must use it effectively. And Christ is teaching our hands to fight. You understand? Understand that. Give me that in Job 23 verse 11. Job 23 and verse 11. Watch this. Job chapter 23, verse 11. My foot had held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. You see that? My foot had held his steps and his way have I kept and not declined. The ways is talk about the word of the way, the word of God. He says, hold fast to the word of God and don't decline it. Read. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. Mm. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see what he said? He says, I have esteemed the words of his mouth, meaning the word of God, more than my necessary food. Why? Because the necessary food that we need is the word of God. To feed our spirits, because why? Our soul is on the line. Our spirit is on the line. So we must feed our spirit with the word of God because it's the food that we need. It's of necessity. That's what our forefather Job is teaching us here. Read that again, verse 12. 
Job chapter 23, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Because that's what we're supposed to understand. We need to understand that the word of God is the food that we need. It's necessary food. Understand that thing. Give me that in Matthew 6. Give me Matthew chapter 6. Um, jump up. Matthew 6 verse 11. That's what I want. Matthew 6 verse 11. Watch this. Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Give us this day our daily bread. Read that again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 11. Read. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. The day, that daily bread right there is the necessary food that we need. That bread is a metaphor for the word of God, the body of Christ, the Bible. That's the necessary food that we need in order for us to overcome. Understand that thing. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 30. Okay? Because King Solomon explained the same thing. Proverbs chapter 30. Read verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. Mm -hmm. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Read. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. You see that? Feed me with food that is convenient for me. Give us this day our daily bread. That's what we're reading here. Feed me with food that is convenient for me, that is necessary for me. That's the, the necessary food is the word of God that we must esteem on high. Understand that that is the only way we are going to overcome. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Um, let's start at verse 18. Watch this. Matthew chapter 17, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Jesus rebuked the devil. You know what? And let's start at verse 14. Let's start at verse 14. We're going to read down. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Ray, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, for of times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. So, so he says, have mercy on my son because he's crazy. He's a lunatic. Okay, he's crazy. Okay, he's possessed with the demon. Ray? And I brought him to thy disciples and they could not cure him. He said, I brought him to your disciples, Christ. They could not rebuke the devil out of my son. They couldn't help him. Read. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, mm. how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. You see what the Lord is saying? He says, O faithless generation, faithless and perverse generation. He says they were faceless and they were perverse. He's getting on the disciples. He's cursing them out. Okay, go ahead. Because why? He says they were faith. They had no faith and they were perverse. Read. And Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. You see that? The child was cured from that very hour. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? Why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we cast the, the, the demon out of the child? What, what did we do wrong? Go ahead. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Because of your what? Because of your unbelief. So he's telling the disciples, hey, listen, the reason why you could not cast him out is because of your unbelief, meaning you don't believe what is written. You don't believe what the prophets have said. You don't believe what Moses in the law has said. You don't believe what the Bible is saying. That was the problem. So now let's take it, let's take it, let's take it to what we're dealing with on a daily basis. Whatever sin that you're in, men and women, whatever sin that is stubborn to you is difficult to overcome, this is this, this is your answer right here. When you realize that you cannot overcome something and it's been bothering you for ages, as long as you can remember, this is the reason right here. Because of your unbelief, you don't believe what the Bible is saying. 
So what is the Lord saying to the disciples? They are double-minded. You understand? All this. Give me that in James. Let's go to the book of James real quick. Okay. The apostle James, he addressed this thing. James chapter 1. James 1 verse 5. Watch this. James chapter 1 verse 5. Mm -hmm. You know what? In Start of his 1. Whoa, whoa. Start of his 1. James 1 and 1. Watch this. James chapter 1 verse 1. Mm -hmm. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Go ahead. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. So now the Apostle James is, is writing a letter to the 12 tribes which are scattered, right? He's writing to the Israelites. But now he's telling them, he said, listen, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, meaning trials. He's letting us know that we're going to encounter problems in this walk. We're going to have to go through some, we're going to have to go through some stuff in this truth. That's what the Apostle James is saying. Come on. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work as patience. Because your trial is to teach you patience. Okay, come on. But let patience have a perfect work mm. that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. You see that? Because patience is going to have a perfect work in your spirit that you may be perfect and entire, meaning whole, lacking nothing. The nothing is talk about what? The wisdom of the Most High God, the understanding of the wisdom of the Lord, being able to communicate with the Most High God, being able to be a God's vessel of righteousness to your people. Read on. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and mm -hmm. it shall be given him. So he says, if you lack wisdom, ask the Lord, he's going to give it to you freely. Watch this. Go ahead. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Mm. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Stop right there. You see what the apostle James is saying? He says, you must ask. But he says, but when you ask, you must ask in faith. That's why he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation. Because they were working with Christ, but they still had no faith. They were faithless and they were perverse. They did not believe. Why? Because they were double-minded. So that's why he says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. They were double-minded. Why? Because of what? Because of the earthy tabernacle that muses, that weighs down the mind that muses upon many things. So when your mind is all over the place guess what you are wavering you are like the wave of the sea which is driven by the what you are like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed you are tossed to and fro by every wind of Ephesians chapter, Ephesians the fourth chapter. Let's get there. Ephesians 4, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You see, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, we must come in the unity of the faith in, our, in Christ. We must have faith in the Messiah, what he did for us. Go ahead. That we henceforth be no more children mm. tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You see what he's saying? He says, say, listen, we must not be kids no more because children are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive the simple ones. Next verse, read. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, 
which is the head, even Christ. You see that? He says, we must speak the truth in love, meaning in the commandments, that he says, may grow up into, and into him in all things. We grow. We grow. When we are in the truth, we keep God's commandments. Growth must come. Growth must come about. That's what he's saying right there. Okay. Now, go back to where was it now? James chapter 1 verse 6. Mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. You see that? Because if you are wavering, guess what? You have been tossed to and fro, you understand, with every, by every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, meaning the deceit and trickery of men. You understand? So that's what he was telling the disciples, says, because you don't have faith, you don't believe. You understand? You faithless, you perverse, and you don't believe. Go ahead, verse 7. Come on. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, don't think you're going to receive anything of the Lord. It says anything. So whatever you ask for, you will not receive it if you're what? If you're double-minded. If you're wavering. The Lord is telling us, he's giving us the ground rules here to receive the blessings. We must keep the commandments. We must not be double-minded. We must not be tossed to and fro. By every window doctrine, by the slight of men, we must be steadfast in his commandments. Then the Lord will give us what? The Lord will give his ear to us. The Lord will answer our prayers. The Lord will give us blessings that we need. You understand? In the lands of our captivities. Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. A double-minded man is unstable in all. In some... No, all his way. The Lord says, when you're this is some heavy stuff right here. Now go back to Matthew chapter 17. You know what? Get Sarah 33, verse 2. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 2. Mm -hmm. A wise man hated not the law. Right? But he that is an hypocrite therein is as a sheep in a storm. You see what he's saying? He that is a hypocrite is a sheep in a storm. That's what we just read, Muslim. Read that again, verse 2. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verse 2. Go ahead. A wise man hated not the law, but he that is a hypocrite therein is as a sheep in a storm. Double-minded. So go back to where he was at now, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, read verse 20 again. Watch this. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Read. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief. Because you don't believe, you're still double-minded. You're still one foot in and one foot out. That's what he's telling them. Because of your unbelief, they don't believe in what the Bible says, as it is written. They are one foot in and one foot out. He says, because of that, read. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, mm. remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. You see what he's saying? He says, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Because of your unbelief, he says, that's the reason why you could not rebuke the devil out of this child. So guess what? Whenever we're going through something, whatever sins that we're going through, whatever issues that you're dealing with, whatever stubborn sin that is difficult to get rid of, is not getting out, is, not, you're, is unable to be patched out of you because of what? Because of your unbelief. Because what? We be double-minded. That's what the Lord is saying. Because the mountain represents the problem that you have in your life. But if you believe in the Lord, you apply his commandments, you do what is, what is written, you fast and pray and all that, guess what? Nothing shall be impossible unto you. But guess what? If you give up, you give in, you're going to convince yourself that, guess what? I cannot overcome this. That's what you're going to convince. You are going to convince yourself. You understand what you're going to do? Watch this. Get that in Sarah chapter 5. I'm going to explain what this means. You will convince yourself that, yeah, the reason why 
it keeps coming up over and over, it is because you have convinced and deceived yourself that this I cannot overcome. That's what you've done. You understand? Watch this. No, that's not what I want. Um, yeah, Sirach chapter 6, verse 2. Watch this. No, no, no. Start at, yeah, Sirach 5, that's what I want. Sirach 5. Read verse 1. No, no, verse 2. Sirach 5 and 2. That's what I want right there. Then we're going to go to Sirach 6 and 2 again. Watch this. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Follow not thine own mind and thy strength. You see what the problem is? When you follow your own mind and your own strength, here's what's going to happen. Read. To walk in the ways of thy heart. To walk in the counsel of your own mind. Because you will convince yourself. You'll convince yourself that, you know what? I cannot overcome this thing. Therefore, I'm going to keep doing it. You see the point? Because you've convinced yourself that you cannot overcome it. That's the problem. Now, chapter 6, verse 2. Watch this. Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thine own heart. Because your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord knows it. Read. That thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. Because your soul is going to be torn in pieces by Satan. Satan is going to have a field day with you. Satan is going to devour you in pieces. You understand? Like a bull string alone. Because why? You have not the spirit. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Because you are extolling yourself with your own counsel. That's what the Bible is saying right there. So go back to Matthew chapter 17 now. Matthew 17, read verse 20 again. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. Read. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing will be impossible unto us. Nothing. Nothing will be impossible unto us. It's so it's, listen. We, the children of Israel, we have so much unbelief that even the nations have taken our Bible to, uh, to promote their brand. Adidas, impossible is nothing. Anybody ever seen that? Where do they get it from? They get it from here. Nothing is impossible. Impossible is nothing. Yeah, that's the Adidas slogan. Eh? That's the Adidas slogan. Nothing is impossible. Impossible is nothing. Yeah, they get it from here. From out of the mouth of our Lord and Savior. Now they've created a, a whole brand out of that. You understand? Read. How be it, this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. You see what he's telling you? He says, but this type of sin, that does not want to go away. The only way for it to go away, he says, it goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. That's the only way you're going to break that, that sinful barrier. That's the only way. But by prayer and fasting and application of God's laws. Don't forget that, by the way. You understand? Don't forget that. Give me that in Luke 22, verse 31. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that mm -hmm. he may swift you as wheat. You see what the Lord is telling Simon Peter? Is that Satan has de have desired, meaning is Satan's desire to destroy us. You see that? That's Satan's desire. He lives for that. He lives to see the Israelites fall. That's why it says, have desired to have you. That's some heavy stuff right there. Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Meaning Satan's desire is to destroy our soul. I hope you understand the fight we're in. That's Satan's, Satan's desire is to see you fall. Satan's desire is to see you being overcome by your own sins. That's the desire of Satan. You understand? That is Satan's desire. I want you to understand that thing. 
I'm going to give an example. Hold this. Give me the book of James real quick. Okay. No, no. Give me first Peter's. Mm. It is first Peter's. Yeah. First Peter's five is eight. Read that. First Peter chapter five is eight. Come on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Mm. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see what the Bible is saying? Is this because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, see, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. So as a roaring lion, Satan, the, our adversary, guess what that's his desire his desire is to do what that's what he lives for that's his desire mm, i'm not touching that but you remember when we read in genesis 4 with cain he says and his desire <laughs> let's get that real quick <laughs> watch this mm, genesis 4 i'm going to show you something genesis the fourth chapter genesis chapter 4 read verse 7 this is after cain was mad as hell because he did not do what the Bible says. He did not do what he what he was commanded to do to bring an animal so that his blood can be spilled. He brought fruits and veggies. And he got mad because he did something wrong. Because of what? He hates instruction. Now read Genesis 4 verse. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. seven. Watch this. Genesis chapter 4 verse 7. Read. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Uh huh. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. Read. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. You see that thing? And unto thee, unto thee, the thee is Satan, shall be his desire. Meaning, Cain's desire will be to do what? Will be to serve the devil. That's his desire. And thou shalt rule over him. And Satan will rule over Cain. So Cain's desire will be to serve the devil. Cain's desire will be to worship the devil. The white man's desire is to worship the devil. That's his desire. You understand? That's his desire. That's why they like it when they see us at the bottom. They love it when we're at the bottom begging. You understand? But now we're coming back to who we are and we're coming back to our heritage. Understand that thing. So let's go back. First Peter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Come on. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You see that thing? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. That's what he does. That's his desire. He lives for that. You understand? So you can imagine what type of spirit we're dealing with here. Give it that in Luke. Go back to Luke now. 22 verse 31. This is what Christ is telling Satan is telling the apostle Peter what Satan's desire is regarding him. Read it. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Come on. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. That he may sift you as wheat. He meant that's his desire. His desire is to sift you as wheat and to destroy and devour you. Go ahead. But I have prayed for thee. Stop right there. But I have done what? But I have prayed for thee. But I have prayed for you. So what is the... Listen, this is Christ speaking here. Because Christ could have just said, listen, I'm going to launch a legion of angels. They're going to, you know, cut Satan to pieces. But the Lord didn't say that. The Lord said, but I have prayed for you, Peter. Because there's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. The power of prayer comes in when you keep God's commandments and the Lord can be able to hear and answer your prayers. Then you're going to see the power in prayer. You must not be double-minded so the Lord can hear your prayers. You must keep God's commandments so the Lord can hear you when you pray. 
Read that again, verse 31. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Read. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. He says, but I prayed for you, Peter. I have prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fail not. Because that, what is the Lord telling Peter? He says, your faith is going to be tested, Peter. Your faith is going to be tested. So guess what? When we come to serve the Lord, we must prepare our souls for temptation. Get that in Sarah 2 and 1. We must prepare our souls for temptation. You come to serve the Lord, we must prepare our souls for temptation because we are going to be, we are going to be tempted. Our faith is going to be te tested, whether we believe or not. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. You see, when you come to serve the Lord, prepare your soul. Prepare your soul. Your soul, because your soul is what Satan is going to come for. He's going to come for your soul to devour it. You understand? He says, we must prepare our souls for the temptation to come. That's what he's saying. Go back to where he was at now. Luke 22, verse 32. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Mm -hmm. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now that's heavy right there. When, thou, when you are converted, what does that mean when you are converted? I'm going to show you something. Give me that in Acts chapter 3 verse 19. When you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. I'm going to show you something. We read this all the time, but watch this. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Watch this thing right here. Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your Re sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, I want you to stop right there. He's, read that again. Read it slow for me. Watch this. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Stop right there. Repent, repent, and be converted. Repent ye therefore and be converted. What converts us? Get that in Psalms 19, verse 7. Repent and be converted, right? Watch this. Hmm. Psalms chapter 19, verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting mm. the soul. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. So the laws of God is what is perfect and what converts our soul, our spirit, our minds, right? Go back to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Watch this. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Stop right there. Remember what the Lord told the apostle Peter. It says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. So here we are reading, it says, repent, meaning change, and be converted. What converts us? God's laws is what converts us. Go ahead, watch this. That your sins may be bloated out. Stop, stop. That your what? That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be forgiven. Because when your sins are forgiven, you do what? You overcome. When your sins are forgiven, it means you overcome. So go back to Luke 22. Let's understand what Christ is telling the Apostle Peter here. You understand? Read it. Verse 32 again. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Pray. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Mm -hmm. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. When you overcome, Peter, when you overcome, that's what he's saying. When you overcome the trial that is going to come, when you overcome that, then you're going to be able, you're in a position to strengthen your brethren. But until then, you will not be in a position to strengthen your brothers. But when you overcome your own personal trials, then you are in a position to over what? To strengthen your brethren. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? That's what the Lord is saying. So what is he saying? We have to go through this. 
and our faith is going to be tested. You understand? So that's why it says, I pray for you that your faith fail not. That you must have faith. And our faith is by our works. Go, go, go that now. Go to James 2. Go back to the Apostle James. James chapter 2, read verse 24. James chapter 2, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. You see that? You see, you see then how that by works a man is justified. You are going to be over, you are going to overcome by your works and not by faith only. So your works will prove your faith. Your works will prove that you got faith. That's what your works will prove. You understand? So the Lord is telling the apostle Peter, listen, if when you overcome, you understand, then you're going to be able to strengthen your brothers. That's what he's telling him right there. Understand that. Remember, the apostle Peter was the head apostle when Christ left. But the apostle Peter had to overcome. You understand? Yet to overcome. Because remember, the apostle Peter did not believe what Christ was telling him. That's why he told him, listen, get thee behind me, Satan. Why do you have to tell the apostle Peter that? Because the apostle Peter did not believe what Christ was telling him. Listen, I'm going to be crucified. This is what's going to happen to me. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in... Um, yeah, get that in Matthew. Matthew 26. Matthew chapter 26, read verse, verse 33. Watch this. Matthew chapter 26, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet mm -hmm. will I never be offended. You see, the apostle Peter had a big mouth. <laughs> you see what he's saying right here? Read that again, verse 33. Matthew chapter 26, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet mm. will I never be offended. You see what he's saying? Though he says, But me, I'm never going to be offended. You understand? The apostle Peter had a big mouth. Okay? Watch this. Read now. Hmm. Before you get that, read Mark 8:31. Watch this. Mark chapter 8, verse 31. Mm -hmm. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. So now Christ is telling the Apostle Peter and the rest of the disciples what's going to take place, right? Go ahead. And he spake that saying openly and Peter took him and began to rebuke him. So they are now the apostles, remember, Christ is working with the disciples, right? You understand? As he's working with the disciples, he's telling them what's going to take place. He's going to be betrayed, he's going to be put to death, and he's going to rise again the third day. After he said this openly, the apostle Peter takes Christ, he removes him from the rest of the group, he speaks to him aside. He says, listen, let me, let me talk to you, bro. Let me talk to you. You understand? And the apostle Peter took him and began to rebuke him. He's correcting Christ now. He's chastising him. Well, what the hell is this? <laughs> Watch this. Read. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. Christ now turns about. He says, when he had turned about and looked on his disciples. Because now the disciples are watching this whole thing going down. They are watching this thing, right? What did Christ do? Go ahead. He rebuked Peter saying. Mm. Get thee behind me, Satan. You see what he's telling? He's saying the, he said the apostle Peter, you got the devil on you. You got the devil on you, Peter. What the hell is wrong with you? You understand? That's what was going on. Because the apostle Peter, what was his problem? The apostle Peter was thinking carnally. He wasn't thinking spiritually at this time. He was being carnal. He was not being spiritual. Because he needed to understand that this must take place. Yeah, and I was saying, no, we'll protect you. Nobody's going to touch you. You understand? That's the, that was his mindset. You understand? Read. For thou 
savor is not the things that be of God. Because at that point, Satan has jumped on the apostle Peter to say what he said and to do what he did. Satan has now jumped on the apostle Peter because Christ is saying, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou, but, but, but he says, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of man. Because, which means that if now the, if the apostle Peter is saying this, because the devil has jumped on him, that means the 12 tribes will not be redeemed from the old covenant to the new. You see this? So that's what the apostle Peter was really saying. He had the devil on him at that point. Why? Because that means that if Christ doesn't do this, that means we're not going to get the kingdom. We will not be redeemed. We will be in slavery forever. You understand? So he had the devil on him at this point. Huh. That's, what the, that's what Christ was really telling the apostle Peter because the apostle Peter didn't get it at that point. You understand? He was thinking physically when Christ was speaking, no, 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 no. You don't understand what I'm about to do. What I'm about to do is going to change everything about the 12 tribes of Israel. And the apostle Peter at that point, he couldn't think straight. He didn't see clearly. Why? Because he had the devil on him at that point. You understand? So go back to Luke 22 now. The book of Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Mm -hmm. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You see what he's saying? When you get your mind right, Peter, then you're going to strengthen your brothers. Because at that point, his mind wasn't right. So, but he had to what? He had to convert. He had to overcome that. He had to overcome that barrier. And then when he did, guess what? He was able to strengthen his brethren. So much so, get that in 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. He had, to, he had to explain this to the people. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Watch this. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. Come on. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Mm. Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. Now he explaining to the apostle Peter, is explaining to the people regarding the apostle Paul. He is strengthening the people now. He is strengthening the brethren because there was doubt regarding the letters of Paul that was going out because there was a rumor going about, get that in Acts chapter 21, verse 20. 20 verse 21, I think that's what I want. There was rumor going about regarding the, the letters of the Paul's letters that was going out. Yeah, Acts 21, Acts chapter 21, read verse 20. Watch this. Acts chapter 21, verse 20. Mm -hmm. And when they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe, mm -hmm. and they are all zealous of the law. They are all, they believe, and they are zealous of the law. Watch this. Read. And they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, mm. saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. But of the laws. Now, you see what the problem is? There was a rumor going about the Apostle Paul saying, listen, the, listen to the Apostle Paul, is that we, are of, we are informed of you that thou you are teaching all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses. Was the Apostle Paul teaching that? No. He wasn't saying, don't circumcise your kids. He wasn't saying that. He wasn't saying forsake Moses. He was not saying that. But there was a room about what he was teaching because they didn't understand the letters of the Apostle Paul. Now the Apostle Peter, go back to 2 Peter 3 verse 15 now. 2 Peter 3 verse 15. Mm -hmm. and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you. Now the apostle Peter is strengthening the disciples now. He's strengthening the brethren. You understand? He's explaining to them what's going on in Paul's letters. 
Read. As also in all his epistles. As also in all his epistles. That, what does that mean? It means the apostle Peter had to read the letters of Paul to make sure that the things that were going out were on point. The apostle Peter had, he had to have known that. He had to have read the letters of Paul to explain this to the people. That's why it says also in all his epistles, that means he read them all. He understood what was written in them. That's why he's strengthening the brethren about what the apostle, I'm giving an example here, read of an example of the apostle Peter strengthening the brethren. Come on. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, mm -hmm. in which are some things hard to be understood, mm -hmm. which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You see what he's explaining to them? So he about the letters of Paul. So what is he doing? He's strengthening the brethren to also shut down the rumors about the apostle Paul and his letters that he was writing to all the churches that he was looking after. So the apostle Peter is doing that. He's making sure that the people understand what the apostle Paul is saying. So he had to read them letters. He had to make sure everything is good according to what? According to prophecy, history, and the laws that are written therein. You understand? That's what we're reading here. So we need to understand that thing. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3 and verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. You see that? Because our own understanding is television, TikTok, social media, Facebook, Mzanzi Magic, we are Jola 99. That's the black man and the black woman is understanding today. Read that again. That's why we lean on our own understanding. Read that again, verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. You see that? We are commanded to trust in the Lord with all our heart and we don't lean on our own understanding. That's the message. We need to understand that we are not going to be able to overcome if we don't trust in the Lord nor lean on his no no trust in the Lord and lean on our own understanding. If we lean on our own understanding, guess what? The Lord will not prosper our ways. We will not prosper. Go ahead. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. And he shall direct thy paths. The Lord is the one that will direct our paths. You understand? He's the one that will direct us in, in the way in which we should go. Read. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Mm. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. You see what he's saying? Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's what we, that's the message. That's what the Lord is telling us we must do. If we do that, we're going to be good in the sight of the most high God. I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Okay. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he prayed it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praise to the Lord. All praise.